In this video, we're going to discuss morning sickness blah, and how to help ease the misery of constant nausea. We're going to discuss the differences between morning sickness and its evil twin sister, hyperemesis gravidarum. If you want to learn more about natural hospital birth, subscribe now. Hi, and welcome to the free COPA birth early pregnancy series. My name is Katie Griffin. I'm a registered nurse, Lamaze certified childbirth educator, and the lead educator for COPA birth. I'm also the mother of six, almost seven. Did you know that around 70 to 85% of women experience morning sickness during pregnancy? In about 50% of women, this includes nausea and vomiting. In about 25% of women, it means nausea without any vomiting, which is no piece of cake either. It often starts at around week six of your pregnancy, increases over the next month, and typically goes away around week 14, near the end of the first trimester. Some women do have to wait a bit longer, but for most women, morning sickness is done by week 20. For an unfortunate few, they may continue to deal with nausea throughout the entire pregnancy. So what causes morning sickness? Hormones, or at least that's what doctors think, though no one is totally sure. Human chorionic gonadotropin, known as HCG, is often the hormone we blame. HCG is produced shortly after the fertilized egg attaches to the wall of the uterus. It's what you test for in a urine pregnancy test. It increases steadily over the first several weeks of pregnancy and then decreases after the first trimester. Progesterone could also contribute to nausea and GI symptoms since it impacts all of the smooth muscle of your digestive tract. But no matter who or what is to blame, Morning sickness is the worst, blah. And whoever named it morning sickness? Because I found that it's there throughout the entire day and for me, it was often worse in the evening. So what are some tips you can try to help ease the nausea? Eat small, frequent meals. I know this seems counterintuitive. If you don't eat, the nausea will get worse. So eating small, frequent meals can help keep that nausea at bay. Increase your protein intake. In my seven pregnancies, I found that eating foods high in protein is a huge help. Eggs, lean meat, cheese, almonds, these kinds of foods can all help keep your blood sugar level and decrease nausea. If you've developed aversions to any of these foods, consider adding a high protein supplement to a smoothie or a shake. Keep snacks by the bed. Again, it's all about eating. Try eating a few crackers before getting out of bed so that your stomach has something to work on before you stand up. Drink plenty of fluids, but sip, don't gulp water. <laughs> it's important to stay well hydrated, but if you're typically a water gulper, the kind of person who just chugs it down to get it over with, that probably won't fly with morning sickness. A rapid onslaught of water often leads to nausea. So drink smaller amounts regularly throughout the day. Avoid smells that bother you. This is of course easier said than done, but it makes sense that if you have an aversion to a scent, you should try to eliminate it from your environment if you can. Choose easy to digest foods. If nothing seems to settle well in your stomach, go back to the basics. Remember the acronym BRAT. Bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. Keep it simple and keep it mild. Ginger. Ginger may help to soothe your stomach, so try ginger candies, ginger tea, or ginger ale with real ginger in it. For most of us, morning sickness brings a rough few months, but then it's done. If you find that you can't keep down any fluids or food for more than a day, it's time to call your healthcare provider. In around 2% of pregnancies, women have a more severe form of persistent nausea and vomiting called hyperemesis gravidarum, which I'll abbreviate today as HG. It's marked by more extreme symptoms with more extreme side effects. HG is diagnosed if a woman loses 5% of her pre-pregnancy weight and has other problems related to dehydration or loss of body fluids. This can result in hospital stays, IV fluids, or IV nutrition. Some other differences between morning sickness and HG. With morning sickness, mom will feel nausea but may not vomit, 
With HG, a mom will experience severe vomiting. While morning sickness usually goes away after the first trimester, HG may last up to week 20 or unfortunately throughout the entire pregnancy. With morning sickness, you're unlikely to vomit enough to cause dehydration. HG, on the other hand, can cause severe dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. In most cases, neither morning sickness nor HG affect mom or baby's long-term health. But with HG, there's a risk that mom can experience severe loss of nutrients and fluids. So when does this become risky and when should you call your doctor? If you can't keep any food or fluids down for more than a day, or if you're showing signs of dehydration, you're gonna to wanna to call your healthcare provider. Signs of dehydration include a small amount of urine or you find it difficult to urinate at all, dark colored urine, the inability to keep down liquids, feeling dizzy or faint when you stand up, having a racing heartbeat, your doctor may have you start with the same suggestions as we've discussed previously for morning sickness, like small, frequent, high-protein snacks. If those more common tips don't work, he or she may prescribe medications to help control your nausea and vomiting. In some cases of HG, a woman may need a short hospital stay to receive fluids intravenously. The bottom line is that most women will experience morning sickness during pregnancy. However, it usually lasts only a trimester or so and is uncomfortable but not life altering for most women. If you think you may be experiencing HG, I wanna start by offering you my deepest respect as a woman and also my sympathy. <laughs> Contact your doctor to see what options you might have to find relief and know that this will eventually end and you'll have a gorgeous little baby as your prize. Moms, now it's your turn. What tips or tricks have you found to be helpful to ease your nausea? If you have hyperemesis gravidarum, what suggestions do you have to other moms who might be struggling with this as well? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.